The Gardener's Dilemma. Now you know that you need healthy soil to grow healthy plants. The way you get healthy soil is by increasing the number of microbes in that soil. But there's a catch. How do you know that what you're doing in the garden is actually increasing the number of microbes? When you add compost, did you see an increase in microbes? What about compost tea? Lots of people talk about using it. When you brew that tea, do you actually increase the number of microbes in the tea? When you add it to your soil, does the number of microbes go up? The problem is that up until now, there's been no way for a gardener to actually measure the number of microbes in their soil, or in compost tea, or in compost. And yet, it's really critical that you know that information. For all you know, that compost you just bought has no microbes in it. Or maybe the compost tea that you're brewing isn't actually growing microbes. The only way to get answers to those questions is to measure the number of microbes in your soil. And up till now, there's been no easy way for you to do that. There are some lab tests that you can get done, but they're very expensive and they take several weeks to do. It's not really an answer for the average gardener. But I have good news for you. There is now a new method that is designed specifically for measuring microbes in soil, compost, compost tea. And in this video, I'm going to have a close look at how well this test works. Now, I'm not going to describe the test in this video or even show you how to do the test. I'm going to do that in a separate video. What I'm interested here is to measure the accuracy of this new test. I've run through several test scenarios and I'm going to show you the data and tell you what it tells me about the accuracy of the test. Oh, and you're probably sitting there wondering, well, what test is this? Well, this is a new test called the microbiometer. It's a test kit that you can do at home. Each test costs you about $10, takes about 30 minutes to do. The great thing is that you can do it in your kitchen and you get immediate results. All you need is a cell phone. Running a test is pretty simple. Collect your soil sample, take a measured amount of that and put it in a test tube, add a little packet of salts to that, add some water, stir it up, wait, put a couple drops of that onto a special card that's part of the kit, and then take a picture of that. The free app that you can download will do all the analysis for you and give you the results. To start things off, I thought I'd do a simple test. I went and collected some soil samples around my house. Uh, one sample was a clay soil that had very little growing in it. I knew it was low quality soil. I didn't expect to find many microbes there. I also took some soil from a wooded area. That ground has never been used for agriculture and it has some nice large sugar maples growing in there. It's a really nice dark crumbly soil. I expected pretty high numbers in there. Then I have my garden soil which I've been growing in for 18 years and this is a perennial bed. I mulch and I take care of the soil. I do very little digging. So I would expect the numbers to be pretty high there too. And then I went to my compost pile and dug right in the bottom of the pile and got some really good old compost. Now that's got to have lots of microbes, right? And I analyzed each of these and these are the results I got. I listed the soil samples in the table so that the one at the top is the one that I thought would have the most microbes and the one at the bottom is the one with the least. What the microbiometer does is it measures the amount of microbes and reports it as a mass. So these numbers are the amount of carbon per gram of soil. And you can see the compost had 440, the old forest had 280, the garden soil had 423, and the clay soil, the numbers were so small, they're somewhere under 200, but we don't know where they are. That's the detection limit of the device. It, it can't go any lower than 200. If we look at those numbers, they're a bit surprising. I really thought that the soil from the forest would be the best one. Now looking at this, we might conclude, well, the microbiometer is not working or the results aren't as I expected. And this is one of the values of actually measuring these things. As gardeners, we've made certain assumptions based on what we read on the internet and in books that certain soil is better. Certain soil has more microbes and that forest soil should have a lot. 
but this summer was very dry and that forest soil is really dry. The trees have been sucking up all the water. We've had no rain for two months. That's not a healthy condition for microbes. So maybe in a normal year the number would be higher and because it's been so dry that number in the forest has gone down. Now the compost stays fairly wet and even my garden soil got watered a little bit. So that may account for these numbers. This is why it's so important to do some measurement. The right hand column there looks at the fungal bacterial ratio and this is another number that the microbiometer gives you. So it's the amount of fungus in relation to the number of bacteria. I'm not going to go into that in detail. I'll leave that for another video. Some gardeners think that this is a really important ratio. My personal opinion is that it's really not. But it is kind of nice that this test gives you that ratio. So now we've seen a few results, but that really doesn't tell us if this test is working. I want to have a closer look. I want to know what is the repeatability of this test and what is the accuracy? Now you might not be familiar with those two terms or clearly understand what the difference are, but it is important to understand if we're looking at any kind of data to validate a test. So here's the difference between repeatability and accuracy. If you take three darts and you throw them at a dartboard and all three of them land in exactly the same spot, that's good repeatability. Each time you throw it, you're doing it the same way. You're getting the same result. Now those three darts might be in the center or they might be way off in the bottom right hand corner. Doesn't really matter as far as repeatability goes. They're repeatable because they end up in the same spot. Now if you take those three darts and you also hit the bullseye every time, now you've got good accuracy. Accuracy is measuring how close are the numbers to the real value. And I'm going to have a look at both of those in this video. Let's first talk about accuracy. How accurate are the numbers we're getting from this test? Well, here we have a real problem. There are lab tests for measuring the micro mass of microbes in soil. To learn more about these tests, have a look at my blog post. I describe in detail there. For this video, let me just say that all of these tests are indirect measurement. They're not really measuring the mass of these microbes. They're doing it in some roundabout way, and that causes problems with the test. Each of the tests has limitations. They work on certain soils, but not others. So the bottom line is that we really don't know how many microbes are in the soil unless we do microscopy work. And we can take that soil and have a look at it under a microscope and count microbes and differentiate those microbes. And that's a task that you have to leave to the professionals and it has to be done in a proper lab. Even that test has limitations because it's doing a counting method. It doesn't weigh the material. It's looking at how many fungi I have, how many bacteria. Bacteria I have. It's not measuring weight, and we're interested in the mass of these. So it's really difficult to measure the accuracy of any of these tests because they all give slightly different data, and none of them is absolutely correct. I'll come back to that later in the video. The first thing I wanted to do was measure the repeatability of the camera itself. So let's say the test runs perfect every time. Now we have this little card with a drop of sample on it, and we have to take a picture of that with our camera. Now everybody's got a different cell phone. The cameras in those cell phones are different. The lighting that the cell phone provides is different. We've got all this variability. How can they all give the same result? Well, the company that made this test has looked at that, and the variability is fairly small across all these cameras. And the reason is that they use a grayscale. And you'll notice on the card, we have a grayscale around the outside of the center spot. And it's the center spot where your sample goes, and then it gets compared to this grayscale. The software in the app is able to use this grayscale and standardize each of these phones so they all produce the same result. I wanted to check the repeatability of my cell phone. So what I did was I took one sample, ran it through the test. So now I have this little card with my sample on it. And I'm ready to take the measurement. And I used that same card and took 10 measurements in a row, one after the other, about 20 seconds apart. In theory, every one of those should give me the exact same result. 
Here's what I got. You can see the readings there from all 10 samples. The mean was 421.7 and the average deviation was about 1.2%. Now that's pretty good. So there is some small variation. 1% is small in this kind of a test. So we don't have to worry too much about the camera. The way the software in the app calculates things using the pictures from your cell phone is quite repeatable. The next thing I wanted to do was measure the repeatability of the complete test from start to finish, including the camera. So what I did was I took one soil sample, put it in a bag, mix it up really well, so no matter which piece of soil I picked, I'd get the same results. And then I took five samples out of that bag and ran it through the full test. Here's the results. So the second column shows you the biomass, and you can see the values there. Now I'd used my old forest soil for this test. You can see that the results varied a bit, and the mean turned out to be 286.6, with an average deviation of about 8.5%. If we have a look at the fungal to, to bacterial ratio, it varied a little bit too, but it's somewhere around 0.5. So is this good repeatability? Well, when you think about the process you have to go through of sampling your soil, taking a specific amount out and measuring that accurately, putting it through the test, putting a few drops of your sample on the card, there's variability in those drop sizes. Then we have to measure it with the camera. There's a bit of variability there. I think 8.5% is pretty good. The other thing you have to understand is that if you go in your garden and you take some soil here, and then you move over a few inches and take some more soil, there's going to be natural variability there too. So every spot in the garden is a little different. And I'll bet the variability from spot to spot is a lot more than 10%. So a repeatability of 8.5% for this kind of a test is actually quite good. Now let's think a little bit about how this test works. We take our soil sample, we put it in some water, we add a little chemical, we let it sit, and then we take three drops of that and put it on our test card. What are we actually measuring? Well, we're talking about microbe and the weight of the microbe. It's clear that we're not measuring the weight of microbe. Okay, that takes a whole different type of test and different equipment. What this test does is it looks at the color of the microbe. Microbes have a natural coloration themselves, and they're colored as well based on the soil that's around them. They ingest things from the soil, and that causes coloration in them. For instance, when they pick iron up from the soil, it will turn them a reddish color. So as they pick things up, they change color. And so we're really measuring the color of the microbe. And then we're translating that into a weight. The more microbes you have, the more color you have. The larger the number, the more weight of microbes. And that's how the system is working. But there's a potential problem with that system. When I did my first test, where I looked at the different types of soil, I noticed that the clay soil produced a solution that was very light in color. My compost, on the other hand, produced a solution that was quite dark. What I noticed was that the samples that were deeper in color also had higher mass reading. The clay soil, which had very light coloration, had the lowest mass now. The compost had the highest. So there seemed to be a relationship between color and the result. Of so I ran another little test to see how important color is in this test. What I did was I brewed myself some tea, regular black tea. That gave me a solution that was colored, but it didn't have a lot of micro. In fact, we can assume the number is zero for the micro. And then I ran through the test, and these are the results I got. So regular T gave me a value of 585. That's one of the largest values I've seen so far. I then took that T and I diluted it down. So it was a weaker T and measured it again. And I got a value of 242. And you can see that the fungal bacterial ratio changed quite a bit too, even though the number of fungus and bacteria in this are pretty much zero. 
Now you might think that these high values are due to things floating in the T, but the test is designed to make those things settle out. So we're not measuring those particulate matter. We're measuring what's left afterward. What this test tells me is that the color of the solution has a pretty big effect on the mass number that the test will give you. So I thought I'd run one more test to have a look at this coloration effect. I took a soil sample and processed it through the normal test using water. And water's clear, so it wasn't adding any coloration. I then took that same soil and ran a second test, but instead of the water, I added tea. And I know the tea's coloring that solution. And then I analyzed both samples. The soil sample gave me a value of 380 and a fungal bacteria ratio of 0.7. The soil sample plus T gave me a value of 1,390 and a fungal bacterial ratio of 3.2. So the T made both of those values go much higher. Concentration of T in this test was a little higher than my last one. And that explains why the numbers are so much higher between this test and the last one. The number you get depends very much on how colored the solution gets. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the test is actually measuring two things. It's measuring color that comes from the microbes, and it's measuring color that comes from the soil sample. Remember, soils also have color. If you look at compost and put that into solution, it colors the water. If you try to make compost tea, the resulting tea is colored as well. It picks up things like tannins from that organic matter in the soil. Soil itself also has minerals in it, and some of those minerals are colored. In particular, iron. Some of you, I know, grow in clay soil that has a lot of iron in it, and that soil is really red. That coloration is from the iron. And when you use that kind of soil, it's going to color the solution, and it's going to affect the numbers you get from this test. All right, so what does all this mean? Should you be using the test? Is it reliable? To understand that, we really have to understand the science behind this whole thing. Remember I said at the beginning, there are no really great tests for measuring microbes in soil. They all have a problem. Even the expensive lab tests have a problem. And they don't always agree with each other. They give you different numbers. This test, the microbiometer test, gives you a number, and it's not perfect either. So if you wanted to use this test to compare your soil with someone across the country who's growing on a completely different type of soil, the test results aren't going to mean very much. Just because your number is larger and his is smaller doesn't mean you have more micro. The difference could be due to the soil. Where I think this test works really well is when you compare soil samples. I have two gardens on my property, and I know that the original soil was the same. In one, I'm putting a lot of compost, and now I can compare the two. And the results are very good at helping me compare those two samples. The test would also be very good for comparing the soil this year to next year. When I'm dealing with one soil type, and I'm comparing one condition to another, the numbers will be quite good. If I want to brew some compost tea, and I want to see how does the micropopulation increase during that brewing process. This test would be perfect for that. One of the big advantages of this test is that it's relatively inexpensive and you can do it at home in about 30 minutes. You don't have to send the sample away. You don't have to wait weeks for a result. The repeatability of the test is pretty good. And the accuracy when you're comparing two soil samples is also very good. To understand all of this better, it's important to understand soil and microbes. And the video right here will do that for you.